Oh my goodness. <laughs> we are finally live on this thing. Been sitting here trying to figure this out for 30 minutes. Obviously, this is the first time we've done a broadcast. So, I'm waiting for my two guests to get on here. I did send them an invite. Uh, let me see what's going on with them. All right, so today's to be the first broadcast, right? Um, we're basically going to talk about importance of entrepreneurship. As soon as I get the rest of my panel on here, we'll have uh, a few questions and so forth going on for the panel. Um, the thing about entrepreneurship is that times are just continue to change, right? So in the beginning, we there's a lot of people being farmers. Then we moved into the industrial age, and now we moved on into the information age. And so what has happened with, with the entrepreneurship is that we have moved from place to place to place. But that does not mean the importance of entrepreneurship has lessened at all. So here's what we have to talk about. <laughs> What's going on? Hold on a second. I'm going to send. Okay. So, Thing about it is, we'll be, once we move into the entrepreneurship, it's very, very important because in this day and age, people are still believing that, you know, they we're still in this recession. So being that if you're in this recession, people think that we can't do anything about where they want to go in life. It's the demand or whatever it may be is going to stop them from becoming the entrepreneur, taking their, into their own hands their own future. Now, the people on this, on this panel, we all have different stories. Uh, just to give you a little bit more about my background, where I have come from is that uh, I have a background in accounting. I uh, went, to, went to Howard University, played baseball. I was a baseball player there. Love, love, love baseball and went there on a full scholarship. So I, 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 my whole plan when I went to college was for me to actually go to the league. You know, I had this idea in the back of my mind that I was going to become a corporate, going to engineering and become a corporate attorney. Well, that didn't really happen. <laughs> I ended up playing ball, and I was asked to go play ball professionally up in Canada, but I decided not to go um, for a reason because of my son. And that will play, my son is a play into the factor of why I become an entrepreneur. Anyway, I left, um, I left, when I left school, I went to work for the government. And working with the government, I uh, was a, was a supervisor. I was an accountant working just under my supervising accountant, uh, supervising accountant for the division I worked in. And the thing about that is, I I just saw myself not necessarily being there for that long. I knew when I was in there that I wasn't going to be there that long at all. It just it just wasn't going to happen for me. So I immediately started looking for a way to get out. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I actually had my uh, my boss came in, my boss came in and had everybody come into his office one by one. It's supposed this guy is supposed to clean up the and clean up the whole department, right? He's gonna do some <laughs> clean up for the, for the government, you know, that's kind of like a oxymoron. He's gonna fix the government, right? But uh, so he brought he brings each one of us into his office one by one, right? Over over about a week time period, and when it got to me, I, I walked into his office and I just knew this wasn't. I knew right then when I came in, I was like, I'm not gonna be here. I need to be doing his job, just coming in and help people clean up stuff. Oh, hey, there we are. How you doing? <laughs> we are live. I was just in the middle of talking to, talking about my uh, background in in being in 
I was at up to the point where I went through college and I've gone to the point where I'm actually working for the government. I'm, we're going a little quickly here. Um, again, this is my friend, good, good, good friend and mentor, Jeff Gamble. Part of the reason why I'm actually on this call is because of this man. Part of the reason why I'm even uh, coherent enough to be on this on this call in um, or this webinar. I keep saying call. So used to be <laughs> doing conference calls. This is a whole new thing for me, yeah, right? <laughs> and you know, as you know, it's different because we are sitting here. We've been on here for like since seven twenty-five trying to get this live, <laughs> and we finally got it on here. But that's okay. Um, I, yeah, so I'll speed up a little more. I was kind of wasting time waiting for you to get on here. Uh, you can invite Josh if you have his email too. Go ahead and send it off to him. Um, but I got to go through the government, and they, when I sat down with my this new manager for the clean up the government, he says, you know, what do you want to do with this with with us? And what I said to him was, I want to learn management so I can take on my own thing. So, you, of course, you know, that didn't last too much longer. I was there for like another year before I was, uh, the end of my program was ended. But so that, I spent that whole year going online, learning about, learning about entrepreneurship, uh, learning about how to create my own business and what rich folk did to become rich. And what I found out was a few different things. Um, of course, one of the first books I learned, learned about was the Think and Grow Rich. I learned that this was the this was the Bible for business. So Jeff, would you agree this Think Grow Rich is one of the most important books if you want to be in entrepreneurship? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. See, uh, and there's a few other books we're gonna talk about also. But now moving when I was when I was doing it, I'll take the time, I'm gonna confess right now, I was taking y'all good tax money and I was using it to print off these books, these ebooks online. This is like 2000, uh, 2003, 2004. I was printing off these big 200, 300 page ebooks and I'm learning about real estate and I'm learning about building businesses. I'm learning about personal development and I'm like, I got to figure this out because I knew I wasn't going to be there much longer. And I'll come to Indianapolis and start getting into real estate. And then from real estate, I started learning more about network marketing. And then network marketing has brought me into internet marketing. Uh, so that's where we are right now. Um, Jeff, I'm going to go ahead and give you give you the opportunity to go ahead and get a little bit about your story before I ask a few. I got a few questions I want to ask just basically to talk about entrepreneurship and the importance of entrepreneurship in today's economy um, and being able to people to basically do what, what it is that they want to do with their own life. So um, just give, give, you can give a quickly, you know, how long you want to take there for giving your background, why, you know, how you became an entrepreneur or why you became an entrepreneur. Oh. Uh. Basically, I mean, it too is kind of why I became an entrepreneur. I mean, I just didn't like following directions. Um, my first actual memory, family memory, was my grandfather actually losing his pants because he was chasing my ass around a tree out in front of the front yard. And uh, my my parents have repeated that story my entire life because I just I never liked to follow directions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, through school, did not do very well. I was always the kid, stop daydreaming. Hmm. And nobody ever asked me what I was daydreaming about. I was like, I was just daydreaming about graduating early and getting the hell out of here. Um, you know, when people, when we practiced the fire drills, I'd always open all my books just to make sure, you know, we created the proper kindling to make the whole place go. And I, I was just ready to get the hell out of there. I mean, I, I didn't understand the whole process of, you know, us getting in a line to form a human wick down the hallway so that way we could just all burn up. I was like, why don't we go outside? Like, what are we doing in the hallway anyway? Um, the window is actually a much faster way to get outside than <laughs> marching us all through the fire. And I, I don't know. It just nothing made sense to me um, the way the system was set up. So when I finally saw network marketing when I was 17, mm -hmm. they said, hey, you don't have to go work for somebody. And I said, that's awesome. I wasn't planning on doing that shit anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I was planning on, you know, manual labor was all I knew. Uh, me and Manuel, I, I thought Manuel was the guy that we worked with in construction. Uh, his name was Manuel. And they're like, are you going to go do manual labor? And I was like, I don't know if me and him are going to keep working together, but like, I was planning on doing something outside. Um, construction, I just thought you were supposed to work with your hands. Mm -hmm. And then a guy actually drew a picture. And the one picture was of the hand. And he said, if you work with your hands, you're probably going to make somewhere between you know, twenty up to about $75,000 a year. 
some specialities you can use your hands and maybe make um, you know 150 you know obviously physicians very technical um, maybe 300 uh, mm -hmm. thousand a year which is I mean a lot of money great money but as a W2 you're only gonna make half of that and then the second drawing was actually of you know somebody's uh, mind somebody's mind and I was like and they said if you use your mind you're probably going to be able to make you know somewhere between fifty to maybe five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last example was actually you know, and I'll just kind of point to it up here was the light bulb up there. Mm -hmm. um, and they said if you use ideas, you can get other people inspired to the ideas. And I was okay. like, well, that kind of makes sense. So my story was seventeen, saw network marketing, got out, started working it, got into the mortgage business, got into the real estate business, and Pretty much, there was a one defining day where the, I don't know if it was just a series of tapes or videos or whatever that I learned, and it said, "Stop looking for other alternatives, just focus." And that was kind of a novel idea because I was always like, "Well, work this job and work this and work this, and then do this part time." And everybody that I saw do that kind of half-assed work, half-assed their business. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you take two half asses and put them together, that does not create a fool. <laughs> it's, just it's just a big half, right? <laughs> it's just a big half. So I finally made that defining, this is all I'm doing. And it was funny, when I made that final, this is all I'm doing, it was probably three to six months later, three months, six months later, everything was working well. And then all these offers started coming in. Because people recognize that I had figured out how to be on my own and work on my own. Now, all of a sudden, everybody that I was trying to get a job with before wanted to hire me. Okay. And that was kind of cool to be able to just say, no, turn it down. And that's kind of, you know, where I ended up. And, you know, ended up seeing direct sales, kind of studied that industry, mm -hmm. um, worked it really hard for about two years, put myself in a position where I didn't have to go to work. Mm -hmm. And once you don't have to go to work, you pretty much defend that forever. You know, once you understand what freedom's like, you don't want to be caged again. Never again. Never again. <laughs> Never again. I understand that. Now you brought up a couple of couple of issues, uh, a couple of things I wanted to touch upon there. Um, for myself, I want to talk to touch more about the like personal development as you're talking about in the beginning, basically getting working on ideas. Is I know part of getting gaining more ideas is about the books we're reading and the people that we're in, influenced by. So I want to go a little bit about there and then come back around to the focus because you've been one of the people that's been instrumental in helping me learn more about focus because I knew about focus when it came down to sports and martial arts. I could focus. It was that's it. I mean, tune everything out. I don't hear the fans or hear anything. But when it came down to business, I was sometimes like it's a little sporadic. Okay, But you touched about, you was talking about a gentleman that would help you with those three ideas, the hand, the mind and the and, and the light bulb for the ideas there. So, what I want to talk about now is that when it comes down to be the importance of uh, important things about being an entrepreneur is that is, is I think you only agree with this is that you must have a mentor. Would you agree that must have a mentor or mentors or mentors? Exactly. I, I like when you say that because I know myself even whether my my mentor is somebody I see face to face or whether it's a book that I continue reading. Um, such as we touched upon, you know, some books that I would believe just off the bat for, for somebody who doesn't have a mentor they can go to right now, they can find some mentorship in the book such as Think and Grow Rich, such as um, John Maxwell learned more about leadership, such as uh, we're going to think about Wallace D. Wallace and the Science of Getting Rich. Then we also have one of the classic books on learning how to network since we're talking about social media a lot we're working with social media right now is the book of uh, how to win friends and influence people mm -hmm. so what I what I wanna what, what I believe about that that was a beginning mentorship as I said about being at my job I was getting mentored through these people through emails through books until I actually found some mentors out there and then they just start pushing me forward and it's amazing to me how when as, as the saying goes um, when the student, when the students looking, you know, that the the person we, uh, leadership will be given to them, that someone will be put in their life to help them give the answers to them, and it continues to happen to me just so much as, just so much as the call, this this very video conference call right now happened. 
I have never done <laughs> the webinar, right? And for this Google Hangouts, right? So what I and what ended up happening was I wasn't quite sure what I was supposed to be doing. And so hold on. And so what happened was around like five o'clock today, for some reason this email came across to me. And it said to get on this hangout, or it was it was it was an inbox message on uh, Facebook. It said get on this get on this hangout right now. They're going to teach you about how to do hangouts. I was like, what in the world? So even though it took me 30 minutes to find this button, it wasn't because I was doing it wrong. I just didn't. I hadn't done it the first time, so we had to redo it. So I finally I finally said, which was one of her tips: if it's not working, do it start over. <laughs> so that's what I had to do. But. If you, I want, I want you to go ahead and touch on something about about your mentors you've had in your life and what are the importance of mentors to you and how they help move you forward as far as you being an entrepreneur. How important are they as a, in entrepreneurship? Well, I mean, I think two things. You know, they say that your income is dictated by the five people that you hang out with or you're around. I lost him. Hold on. We'll resume here. Is it take two? Hello? All right. He's back. Uh, what I was saying is, is it's really about the five people that you spend the most time with. And the five people that you spend the most time with um, have a lot to do with, you know, quote unquote, a mentor. You know, you're looking for somebody that has what you want in whatever area. I mean, and they don't necessarily, sometimes a mentor isn't necessarily somebody who has physically done it, but maybe studied it or, you know, has the experience or age on you. So what I found is finding those people, running with them, learning from them to get you to that next step, that next level, and then moving on and finding somebody else. You know, some people will like pick one person, and that one person's supposed to be everything, and then that one person lets them down, and they don't move past or learn anything else. And what you'll find is, once you learn from, it's like martial arts. Once you learn one style, great, you know one style, you made it to that level. Now being able to study another style, it doesn't mean that it's better. It just means you're going to be more well-rounded all the way around. And that's why I said, you know, more than one mentor. You know, if you find a mentor that maybe financially has everything, but health-wise, they're a mess. Mm -hmm. Great, that that's a mentor for finances and maybe business, but not necessarily for health. So you might have a mentor for health. You might have a mentor for finances. You might have a mentor. And here's the other thing. Your mentor doesn't necessarily have to be somebody you can physically talk to. And the weird thing is, is your mentor doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's physically alive, right? Mm -hmm. which is even more crazy. So you're following a dead person. <laughs> but the whole idea, if they, lived, if they lived better than you, you mm -hmm. know, some people are alive, but dead people have lived better than them, So, which is <laughs> tragedy. Right. You know, when you look back, you're like, I'm alive, and this person's dead, and they still have a better life than me, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know, so you got to do whatever you do, but, you know, find that person, learn from them, hang out. And a lot of people think just because that person has what you want, that you should just be able to go to that person and monopolize their time. Mm -hmm. If you really have a sincere interest in learning something, that person will give you the time of day when you've invested enough to be at the level where it's worthy. And that person who's mastered whatever area is going to know when that is, the problem is, is you don't. Mm -hmm. So there were certain people in the very beginning of network marketing that I tried to hang out with, and they could see in me that I wasn't ready to really, I wasn't really serious, I wasn't ready to hang out. So I tried to hang out with them, I tried to find out like where they were and call them, can I meet you for coffee? And when I wasn't doing the work, I was not worthy of hanging out because that would have taken their average and lowered it <laughs> a okay. lot. You know, my, I would have, I wouldn't have lowered somebody's average, I would have taken the average out. You know, it would be like big negative. That's that's kind of, you know, my thoughts on finding a mentor, find somebody that has what you want uh, that's maybe necessarily not 
at the top of their game, but maybe just at the next level. Learn from them, then find another one. Learn from them, then find another one. Learn from them, and you'll find, you know, learning from multiple people, you'll also learn multiple styles of, you know, how to get along with a lot of people. Right, right, right. And and one thing I want to touch upon there, you was talking about the time thing there, and one thing, one of the things I did learn from you, um, among other things, of course, is that, I already knew about the 80-20 uh, rule, the Pareto Principle. And for the people watching this, you know, Pareto Principle is an Italian guy. What he found out is that 80% of the things that happen in your life right, or in any given event are – you can attribute it to uh, that to like 20% of the people or 20% of the things you've done. So 20, if I got 100 things I do in a day or let's say 10 things I do in a day, two of those things are going to count for uh, count for – 80% of my production, 80% of my income, 80% of my feedback. And it goes even further than that. Is that he says, like, if you have a party, say you have 10 people that come to your party, it's two people out of that party are going to eat 80% of the food. They're going to drink 80% of the booze, whatever it is. And I found this principle to be true. But you also, you told me there's a different way of looking at it, is that as far as being a leader and growing a team, whether that's in your own business or if that's in you know network marketing or some type of internet marketing, you're still building these teams. Is that you want to spend your t your eighty percent eighty percent of your time with that twenty percent of your team that's putting in the most of production, and that by the, by the same token, you're going to spend that twenty percent of your time with the eighty percent that are already doing that much. What I mean, you're going to do that as a group time, but that small twenty percent is giving you most of production. They're going to be the ones that you're giving that that one-on-one -on -one time that uh, that eighty percent of your time, the majority of your time that you're using to grow your team. So I really I really took that to heart when you first said that. And I figured I understood that I had to start actually working uh, to do something to actually you know we're friends. But I still had to do when it came down to business. I had to put in the production order or do something being consistent in order for me to actually work with you. Um, I think that's one of the part of good pieces of helping with the mentor is that one of the things I did find out when I when I got into real estate, one of the things I had to learn from a mentor, uh, very, very, very good, I learned a lot from this guy, um, was that he was always running around. He did not answer my phone calls. He was always just, he was just letting the phone call go into voicemail. But until I finally, finally took initiative and said, all right, I've looked at some of the houses you suggested, and I'm like, I'm ready to buy. I bought that first house from him, made some nice little profit on it. And then from then on out, any time I called him, he was willing to answer my phone calls because I was actually doing something, showing him that I wasn't just there trying to sponge off of him. I wasn't just trying to be, you know, this isn't just a fad or for me. It was something that was important to me and I wanted to move forward on. And <clears throat> I really do I really do think that's very important when it comes to trying to become an entrepreneur. You have to understand that. Yeah, like you said, not everybody's going to give you your time. You must do something. You can't just – it's its rude for one thing. You know, people are going to have a life. You know, I got in – we got into – me personally, I got into entrepreneurship because I wanted to have my life. I didn't want to be sitting at a job, somebody telling me what to do. I, even when I was working for the government or different jobs, I still was a social person. I'd do my little work, and i go over here and talk to that person and do some more work and go over and talk to that person because I wasn't trying to be told what to do. I was going to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> but I got to move on from that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here is that uh, – some of the things that we talk about, again, like we're talking about now about productivity, is some of the very imp most important things about being an entrepreneur. The importance of an entrepreneur is that you must do some certain activities that are necessary, you know, such as creating a mastermind, such as being persistent, um, I guess, one of the, such as faith, such as belief. There's a lot of the principles that come along in the book of Think and Grow Rich. So to you, uh, in your opinion, what would be your top three things that you will feel are necessary you know, to activities or things you must do in order to be successful as an entrepreneur. I would say probably the first one is, um, you know, grow as a person. You know, the personal development side that we talked about is a lot of people said, well, how do I do that? And I think the, the best book that illustrates it is The 15 Laws of Growth by John C. Maxwell, he kind of just lays it down and it was it was pretty funny to actually, you know, read that book and at a certain point he was asked early on by one of his mentors and the guy said, you know, hey John, and what's your plan for growth? And John said he talked for fifteen minutes 
And at the end of him spilling everything he could possibly say, the guy looked at him and said, man, you don't have a plan for growth, do you? He said, no. He goes, well, let me give you one until you figure out your own. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty simple. He said, you know, read, you know, this amount of time. You know, it, it's, it's told you're supposed to read somewhere between, I've heard, 15 minutes to an hour a day. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to grow faster, you'll read more. If you want to grow less, you'll read less. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. second thing is, is listen. And a lot of people, I would say, start listening first before you start reading. Because if you listen, that will at least motivate you to read. But it, reading is a skill just like anything else. I mean, when you first go out to hit a golf ball, you're probably going to miss a lot. Just like reading, when you first start to read, you're not going to comprehend a lot. It's a right. skill that takes time. I was terrible at reading. It was mm -hmm. the hardest thing for me. I could buy a book, man, like nobody else. I, I bought everything. I had a <laughs> library. I was like, create a library. And I'm like, I got my library. He goes, it'll make you rich. And I'm like, okay. And I would stare at my library. I'd be like, library? You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, bring me some money. And I didn't realize you actually had to open the books. And then I went from, like, reading to learn to studying to earn. And when I started studying, that's when it all happened. Mm -hmm. So that would be the first thing is cre have a growth plan and create a growth plan of listening and learning. The next thing is, like you said, find a mentor. Um, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, Nobody pays you for general information mm, that you can right. look up in five minutes. Nobody pays for that. But people pay for experience, and experience, you know, people say, well, how do I get experience? Well, you make bad decisions um, and do things wrong and have a story of what not to do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you want to give out great advice, you have to have experience. And to get experience, you have to have lots of bad things happen. So eventually to be a great speaker, a great coach, it's somebody who's done a lot wrong and kept going and figured it out. So the second thing that I would say is get very specific knowledge on whatever you're doing, do a lot of it and do it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, there's a good book, uh, a great guy that I was able to work with, one of the five mentors you know, that they say to have, David Bird. David Bird said, um, you know, effectiveness, find out what works and do that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the geniuses are. They take the complicated and make it simple. Find the things that work and do that. And then the last thing is it should be really the 11th commandment, thou shall not fool thyself. Um, track it. So yeah. the first thing is you know, growth and having a plan. The second thing is specific knowledge in your area, doing whatever you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then third is, is just tracking those two things, mm -hmm. and, you know, which means you need a calendar. Right. You know, to track everything. Um, you can use, you know, your phone to track everything, you can use whatever, just track it. And if you track everything you're doing, if you do those three things, it'll take a while, but it'll start building that consistency. It builds that repetition, and then everything starts to come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I got you. I mean, that makes so much sense there. Uh, the, only other th the only other thing that I would say di uh, add to that, and I'd say differently from there, the only other thing that I would add to that is the fact of you have got to just start somewhere. The only thing I say, after you got those three things, you got where you're going, you have a plan for your growth, you have the mentorship, uh, and you're learning to listen, you're reading the books and getting for going forward with that. What you have to do in the end is you gotta start somewhere. Period. I don't care what it is. And you said you gotta you gotta track what you're doing and make your mistakes. The only way you're gonna make mistakes is if you're actually out there doing something. And it's what I found out of my own personal experience is this: is that I would learn a lot because I love to read, and you know that I love to read and read. And read when you talk about when you talk about the libraries. I know what you mean. That reminds me of a little funny story. A little caveat here, a little diverse, um, digression. I remember one time that you had a bunch of books and audios and stuff in your car, and your car actually got broken into, and they stole all the books and so forth from your car. And I remember you said something about it like, "Man, there's a motivated thief running around here because you had a whole carload full of books." But no, what's moving forward from those things is I like to find out 
uh, what I need to do. I like to find out exactly what it is that I needed to do. Period. But what, but what ended up happening to me almost in every situation is this very thing. Even though I learned so much information, I didn't know how to apply any of it. And so I could give you a whole bunch of theories about how to do this and how to do that. But then when it came down to actually doing the activities, when I actually put into action or into actually the things that I was learning, it was like I really didn't know but a little bit. I'd only grace the surface of what was, was possible with the information that I had. And then that little bit of activity, just the littlest thing of making a mistake, just boom. I just doubled my knowledge just that quickly. And then doing something else, boom, I, I went a little further. And then after that consistent action, I already knew, like, right, I know I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. This is my zone. This is where I'm going. And then this things just start snowballing for me. Just like you said, Pete, once you start getting focused and said, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, once you got focused, people start calling. You said, well, obviously, he knows something. And that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't decided, well, this is where I want to go. He, I know who I have some mentor gave me some direction. I'm tracking what I'm doing just like as I have here myself. But every every day I start off writing off my gratitude so I know what I'm grateful for. Then I write down what I want to do for the day, the activities I need to do, and I'm writing down what I'm what what I want to uh, what I've read and what I've learned. And then in the end, I'm turning around and saying what I'm grateful for for what I've learned that day. And the very last thing I do before the end of the day is say what I'm going to do the next day. I'm planning for the next day, too, so I know how to improve upon where I just came from. Hey, Josh, what's going on, my guy? <laughs> Got a little delay there. It's okay. It's okay. But um, so the last thing I wanted, to, I would like to talk about that is, again, is to move forward through your daily activities. You've got to do something. It's not like you got to do a whole lot every day, but you need to do something, a little bit of something every day. Every day and lose something. Uh, Je uh, hey, Josh. I know Josh came in real quickly. I want to go ahead and give us a little bit of your. We're talking about entrepreneurship and the importance of entrepreneurship in this in our day and age, so to speak. But it's always been important to me. But the fact that it's more important now that people are still getting laid off or whatnot from their jobs, or maybe the, ba the baby boomers are deciding it's time for a new career and they're trying to figure out, well, we can't do what we did before. It's time for entrepreneurship in the in, in the information age. So how do we do it? So it's still important, but it's got to change what it is. And I know you have a lot of background in, in um, technology and software, things like that, building websites and so forth. I just want to get a little bit of your background, your story, and why you feel entrepreneurship is important. <laughs> got you on the spot. <laughs> I can't hear you, buddy. Let me see. Do I have you muted? No, I don't have you muted. I can't hear you. I still don't hear what you're saying. <laughs> I, I see it clearly, but I, let me see. Let me see what's going on. Are you are you sure you don't have yourself muted? <laughs> Josh, you may want to go out and come back in again and see if that gets you started, okay? We'll be right here for a little, a little while longer. <laughs> well, while he gets that, while he gets that situated right there, once he gets back on, we want to hear a little bit from Josh and his background. Um, and he's a very, very good friend. This is part of the reason why I started getting working with um, internet marketing, also. And what I want to say about that is this: that one thing I did, a, I did a video recently upon the three top business ideas for for this for this time, and. Those three things, I believe, are first off. Let's see what's coming back up. First off, I want to say is going to be network marketing. Hey, Josh, can you hear me? Let me see. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> you can't hear me. Yes, we can hear you, loud and clear. Sweet. <laughs> hey, go ahead. And give us a little bit about your background and why you feel it's important to be. Um, to be an entrepreneur. Uh, a little bit about my background. Mm -hmm. I um, I grew up in a family of uh, through and through blue collar. Um, 
always wanted to be an entrepreneur when I was a little kid. My uncle owned a uh, a company called Mr. Wizards. He made circuit boards for computers and various other things out in California. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I went out there and I visited him um, up in Oroville, just north of Sacramento. Got to work in his facility for a while, kind of showed me a little bit about the robe, showed me a little bit about the business, and it always kind of stuck in my head from that point. I'd like to own my own business, um, but I never really associated with any other business owners uh, growing up. And then I moved to Indiana um, from Pennsylvania, moved to Arkansas, did the employee thing, um, hopped around from business to business to business. I ended up having probably about eight jobs within a two, three year period of time. Um, and that just uh, wasn't, wasn't really cutting it. So I've always wanted to own my own business. And uh, so one day, Jeff is the one that actually sat me down. And as mm -hmm. you can see in the window, he, he, he left the conversation for a second. <laughs> um, he's the one that sat me down and said, you know, well, what are you good at? Mm -hmm. And then uh, he made me draw a list of various different things that I was good at. And uh, gave me a homework assignment, really, and said, let's get back together and we'll review it, go over your list, and something's going to pop in your head. One of these items is going to pop in your head. I said, okay. And then he uh, – I sat with him. I made my list, and I said, Jeff, this is it. I'm going to do this. And he goes, okay. Uh, it was resume writing. Mm -hmm. goes, okay, okay, cool, cool. So I went home. A couple of days later, I sent him a message. I said, hey, check out this website I just made for my resume writing business. And he goes, Josh, who made this website? I'm like, I did, just like a little cheerio squirrel. And <laughs> right. he goes, what? Wait, 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 wait a second. You made that? I said, yeah. He goes, that's it. I'm like, what? It's like, website development. He goes, that's a marketable skill. I can help out with that. I said, great. So he made a couple calls. Um, shortly thereafter, um, I had my first client. Mm -hmm. And then a couple weeks later, I had another client. And it's mm -hmm. just snowballed ever since. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I got started, kind of got into entrepreneurship because I never really enjoyed working for somebody. Else. Oh, I, I know what you never, mean. Never, never liked it. I, I don't know anybody who has. Honestly, <laughs> um, now, there's some it, study out there that petty. says that like like 20 percent of the people are satisfied with the jobs. I don't know who those 20 percent are though. <laughs> I've I've never met one. Um, I've met people that like their jobs, mm -hmm. but I've never met people that enjoy working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice little differentiation. Okay. Mm -hmm. That answer the question. Yeah, as you answer the question here, and I'm gonna go ahead and okay. cover a few of the questions. But since uh, Jeff has stepped off for a second, um, now we talked about how how important mentors are to us and so forth. And you just talked about Jeff helping with there, so I know you believe that yourself. Um, I also talked about some of the, some of the three top things that you believe. And I'm gonna ask you this question: the three top things that you believe are very important to uh, being successful as an entrepreneur. You know, in in your own ex personal experience and so forth. What has been as three Three, not necessarily the top thing. Three things that have been more uh, very um, inf inf instrumental in you becoming successful as an entrepreneur. Three things that have been instrumental. Um, I think one of the first ones would be never letting go of the vision. Mm, okay. What do you mean by that? Explain um, that. I do. Uh, I do challenge course facilitating where I get with uh, young kids from schools, um, okay. sometimes companies, and there's this one particular little game called Death by Hanky that I perform with <laughs> okay. some of these kids. Um, now let me explain this game a little bit, and and then we'll go into 
answering your question. The, the game is uh, I take this rope and I set it up or, or I create some sort of barrier for the individuals to stay in. Mm -hmm. And I give them each a hanky and they have to tuck it in the side of their pants or their pocket or their belt loop or whatever so half of it's about hanging out. Everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. The hanky represents everything that you need to be successful in life. Okay. Everything from monetary resources, capital, whatever, to associations, to skills, to education, everything that you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And then I have them repeat what the representation of those hankies are. Mm -hmm. And they repeat to me, it's everything that I need to be successful. And then I tell them the name of the game. I said, the name of this game is Death by Hanky. Go. And then I wait. I wait and see what happens. And every single time, what ends up happening is they start running around and they steal each other's hankies. Then I pause it and I ask them, why were you taking other people's hankies? And they're like, because I thought that's what we were supposed to do. No, you assume that's what we were going to do. You you created the own rules, and then you saw somebody else starting to do it, and then you did it. And then I would always have somebody else say, well, if I take somebody else's hanky, I'm going to be more successful. I'm like, you already have everything that you need to be successful. Why are you taking somebody else's hanky? And it normally takes about three times for it to sink in, and there's always a small little cluster of individuals that say, well, I already have everything that I need to be successful. I don't need to take anybody else's resources. They have everything that they need to be successful. And in, like I said, it takes three times for it to really click in, and then nobody's taking anybody's hankies. And I stop and ask, why is that? They're like, well, because if I take somebody else's hanky, I'm stopping them from being successful. Exactly. So – it's kind of dreams. People will go out there and take everybody else's hankies. They'll kill right. everybody's dreams, hence the name Death by Hanky. You're killing mm -hmm. the individual. You're killing the spirit. You're killing you know, their dreams. And where I was going with that was that's one of the most important things is never lose the vision. There's going to be people out there everywhere that are going to try to take that. Right. And they may mm -hmm. not mean to. Um, they mean well. They love you to death, but they're trying to make their reality your reality, and mm -hmm. everybody thinks different. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to have that awareness, and you have to still love them, but sometimes you just have to let things go in one ear and out the other. Mm hmm but um, the, but the main part is to stay focused on what you're doing. Not it's not it, it's always abundance out here. There's enough room for me to have what I have for you to get whatever whatever you want without us combating with each other. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Okay. I will never take your hanky, Dwight. <laughs> um, second thing is is personal development. Good. Cool. Continuing to work on yourself. Mm-hmm. Every single day, what are you listening to? Mm -hmm. What are you reading? Mm -hmm. And you know, I I stopped watching television. Um, it's been a while since I've really kind of sat there and watched a lot of television. Now I'll have a show every once in a blue moon. I'll sit back and watch because you know we got to veg out and every once in a while just turn the brain off because it's been on for the last three weeks. Right, so, going, going, going. Um, or movie, record a movie or something, and go back and watch it on a late Friday or Saturday night or something after everything's kind of settled down. You just kind of want to shut off and relax. And I like movies. Right. So I'll still do that from time to time, but it, it's just I don't watch television regularly like I did. Instead, I'll listen to an audio book. Um, I have about six um, – John C. Maxwell books on my phone. Mm -hmm. Then I'll pop in John C. Maxwell, or I'll pop in um, some sort of audiobook that I've downloaded um, and, and listen to that for anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just listen to that in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. I'll watch videos. I'll actually put on, uh, I got the TED app for my iPhone. So okay. I'll put on something on TED. 
Um, that's listen a good, to that's that a, a little bit. Right there. That's a good tip right there, using the TED app to get some of that coming in. Yeah. Um, another thing, you know, reading, reading a book, not People Magazine. What are you really going to learn from People in that Magazine? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can learn some pretty interesting tidbits about some of the celebrities, but are you trying to read people to live vicariously through somebody else's life? Right. What is your intent in reading magazine? magazine? Mm -hmm. Or are you trying to create your own life? So I'll read different books on psychology, on leadership, on um, – right now I'm reading a book on body language. Okay. I mean – how much of our communication is nonverbal? Mm, about ninety-three so, percent. Yeah, so I'll, I'll read. I read books. I'm reading a book right now on nonverbal communication. Okay. So the for number like one, you say is the vision. Keep your eye on the vision. Number two is the personal development. What would be your third one? Third one is your associations. Great. Associations. Um, I joined a referral group with uh, several other small business owners or mm -hmm. business owners in general because they think a little bit differently. They have a little bit more vision. They have a little bit more drive. They have um, you know, some of the things that I want, and I learned a long time ago, if you want to have some of those things, you need to start hanging out and talking with those people that have it because they're best to – teach it to you. Um, that's one reason I spend a lot of time with Jeff. He's been a great mentor to me. Mm -hmm. um, I owe that gentleman a lot, and he still teaches me something every day. He'll send me a Facebook message, um, have me watch a video or, or whatever, or send me uh, just some type of inspirational or question um, for me to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a couple of weeks ago, he sent me a, a, hunt, a top 100 list. You know, What do I want? Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I'm still working on that. Right, right. Um, the top 100, basically because, I mean, I, I have some of these other things, but I never sat and really thought about what it is that I really want. Okay. And that's a tough list to make, especially in one sitting. So <laughs> I've, I'm, I'm setting it up in small little blocks, and I'm, I'm starting to get closer and closer to it being done. Mm -hmm. So... That's those are the three things. So the first one is keeping the vision. The second one is personal development, and the third one is associations. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I get you know, and I fully agree with all all three of those. You know, again, personal development is one that continued to be for all three of us there, and then also with the with the mentorship and associations, so to speak. And I, I know I just was just speaking and touching up on importance of taking action on something and part of that is going on what you said about having a vision I'm gonna do do something but I don't need to be doing something that's gonna be taken away from someone else because I have everything I have my own hanky in my back pocket I got everything I need it <laughs> <Right. laughs> love it I love it love it one thing I, I, I do I really have found the importance of and, and and part of the reason why I think these hangouts are gonna grow and grow and grow is the fact of a mastermind is such an important piece of uh, of, of entrepreneurship and, uh, and of, of of success in general. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, it's hard to do it on your own. On your on your own. I mean, yeah. it, it's it takes a hard man to go to be like Confucius or Buddha to harm or whatever and go sit in a mountain by himself and just meditate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's a tough-minded person. But even then, when they found what they need, were looking for the answers, they came back to everybody else. They couldn't set up the rest of their life. Okay, and they started growing, forming groups around them, and spreading the word through that mastermind that learned from them. So it still comes back to the mastermind in order to be successful. So I really do love these broadcasts like this, and and, and continue to grow. And the same thing happens with our, our network marketing and any other business. You're going to form that mastermind alliance, whether that's in real estate. We've all been in real estate. You, as a real estate investor, you're going to bring in some real estate agents. You're going to bring in some type of appraiser. You're going to bring in some title guy. You're going to bring in the net management company. All they form this network around you. Same thing happens when it comes with like network marketing. You're going to form. You're going to get your inner circle of people that are doing the things that need to be done, to being productive and taking consistent action. You're going to mastermind with them and some of your leadership and how do we build this team even better? Okay. <clears throat> So moving from that, I want to the three the last topic I want to talk about real, very briefly is this something I've found out in my own research, and I think we all can agree on this things is that if anybody wants to get into entrepreneurship, okay, 
and they're looking at it as like, well, here it is. It takes money to make money. And one of the things I put on here in the very beginning, I know people must have made me think I, I put that title on there for no reason, how to make a dollar out of 15 cents, right? So here's a, I'm going to give three examples in these three different industries. The three industries I'm talking about are network marketing, internet marketing, and getting into real estate. Okay. Now, starting off, I know I'm dealing, dealing with internet marketing. I do have working with a business now where it's for $145 a month, you have an opportunity to build, bring in at least $1,000 uh, a month with a little bit of effort, a deal of dedicated effort using the principles we discussed in this already. Now, if you think about those numbers, $145 is 15% of 1000 I can take a $145 investment and turn it into $1,000 plus. Same thing comes with the network market. I know Jeff, you have a little more background in this, but for the most part, your small investment going into um, to, uh, network marketing now, as opposed to years ago when it was thousands of dollars, but now it's averaging somewhere around like $125 to $250, somewhere around that frame, and most people are only looking to make an extra, uh, you know, the extra thousand to three thousand dollars a month would change their life, and that's one thing that you they preach about in network marketing. Again, that's still a small thing. Now, when it comes to real estate, I know this for 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 a fact is that the majority of people's uh, of the most successful people, as far as financially successful and businessmen, majority of their income, majority of their wealth comes from real estate. I know we can all attest to that. <clears throat> And people are like, so how do I make a dollar out of 15 cents? I'm going to give a real brief example here. If you think about buying a property, say a property is $100,000, so we're just going to use 100. When it comes to purchasing that property, one thing you're going to, you're going to buy that property is you come with a, a down payment, that down payment being $15,000 or $20,000, 15 or 20%. Now, what does that mean? That means that I don't have to come up with the rest of it because I can go get a mortgage. That's the natural way people are buying properties, right? So if I take this $15,000, $20,000 down payment, I just bought, I just turned it into $100,000. I just made a dollar out of 15 cents by just taking a $15,000 investment and buying a property. The, all three of those avenues are able to turn a dollar, make a dollar out of 15 cents legally. Not the ways that I, that I know about being around in the streets. That's not where I'm any, I am anymore. And here's, and one thing I understand right here is this. I can take my internet, my internet marketing business, making a very, very, very small investment, take those investments, roll them into my network marketing business where I can take my team, build them into the next network marketing business, and as those profits both combine, I can take those profits and build them into buying more properties. Now, Jeff, that's, that's my full plan right here for somebody who wants to get into uh, becoming an entrepreneur right now because if you look at it, yes, Yes, franchises are one of the most successful businesses there are out right now if you want to have a brick and mortar business. 80% or so plus are successful when you start a uh, franchise. However, the cost of entry is hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you want to look for something that you can actually get into, we're looking at internet marketing, looking at network marketing to help you get started if you want to get into those businesses. You can learn all the skills by not investing so much of your money or somebody else's money in order to because we kind of learn the entrepreneurship skills. Now, Jeff, again, for using that, would you think that's a viable system, or what would you think kind of system you're using yourself? I think you, I know you want to get back into real estate yourself. If you, as a matter of fact, you've already got back into it. But taking internet marketing and moving into network marketing, or starting with network marketing, such as yourself, and using internet marketing to build it, but both of those to work with each other in tandem to break your way back into real estate where you start making a, the, the big residual incomes in the back end. How do you think about that yourself for philosophy or what would put your, kind of your strategy there? Yeah, I mean, the network marketing side, I think the main thing is in real estate is typically you're dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And if you learn the network marketing side first, um, the investment's low. And you, if you screw up in network marketing, you don't get the sale. Um, if if you spend money in internet marketing and you go for a little while and you put money out and you try these different campaigns and try advertising a bunch of different ways, basically you're just spending money, spending money, spending money. If you go into start in real estate and you do one deal, it might be the right deal. 
-hmm. But I know a lot of people that have tried real estate, they do one deal and that's the wrong deal to start with and they lose thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars their very first deal. Mm -hmm. um, so what I see is this network marketing teaches you how to deal with people and understand what's going on. If you use that information into internet marketing, once I understand people, it's very easy to advertise online because I already know what people are thinking, I already know what people are doing, I already know the excuses, I already know what they're going to say and think before mm -hmm. they think. Um, you know, so that's why I think it's funny some people use the little ninja uh, as I know what's going to happen before hand and it really is like that. I mean, I know Josh and I have talked about that is sometimes it seems like Jedi tricks. You, you kind of, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for and it's, it's for real. I mean, you know, there are some times when I sit down and I'm like, that guy's going to join and people are like, that guy isn't going to join. I'm like, watch, I'm going to get up and leave and that guy's going to call you and join. And they're like, how do you, know? you know, and then later it happens and like, how did you know that? I'm like, because once you deal with people, it just, it's very easy to figure out. So I think network marketing makes you a much better reader of what's going on mm -hmm. uh, with eyes open. It's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to figure out, but it's the least expensive way to figure it out. Okay. Internet marketing would be second, and then obviously if you dive into real estate, but if you use that in combination together, master one mm -hmm. and then build with the other two. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in the end, you have to learn how to deal with people. You have to learn how to market. And then once you get those two down and you start making money, you have to know what you're going to do with it. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I see it. I see that. That's kind of exactly kind of where I was going with is, you know, you you got to have build your wealth with the real estate, but of course you can build. You the point is to have cash flow, and cash flow comes from building. If you're in a good network marketing company, that you're going to have a residual income. If you're good with a good program, as far as your affiliate marketing, whatever it is, you're going to market online. You still have a residual income, and of course, when you get in with the with the real estate market, start buying offices and and um, commercial buildings. You're building a residual income. The whole point is to be able to make money while I'm sitting at home sleep <laughs> or wherever I'm, whether I'm on vacation or I'm on a, on a yacht in the middle of, in the middle of the ocean without any uh, cell phone uses or anything like that you know still come back home to have more money than I left off with now Je uh, Josh how do you, what are you what are your thoughts to yourself uh, about the moving into using those two together the internet marketing the network marketing and of course get, eventually get back into real estate is a good plan for people in this market Absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, um, at the end of the day, everything is moving towards online. Every mm -hmm. single business model is moving towards online. There's, there's a lot of clients that I have that don't even have um, shopping carts on their website. Mm -hmm. They need a shopping cart. I mean, 60% of all of sales in the United States are coming from online. If hmm. you're not participating in that, I mean, you're, you're missing out on hundreds, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of potential dollars. Mm -hmm. So, uh, obviously, you have to do some internet marketing. Now, you don't have to be the expert. There's enough free tools out there that, that you can learn it. Because quite honestly, I didn't go to school for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Google was my education. Listen um, to that. Good old Google. Good old Google was my education. Sometimes being every once in a while, maybe Yahoo, <laughs> depending if, if I couldn't find what I was looking for. But there's so many free tools out there and education platforms that, that we can utilize to, to learn internet marketing. Now, it took me a while. Um, to learn it myself that way. However, there are other platforms that, that you can join. There's there's other um, education platforms that you can join um, for small investments or whatever that, that, that can teach you a lot of the stuff. Um, you know, social media. There's there's programs out there that you you pay twenty five dollars and now you have access to all the training material on their website which teaches you everything that you need to know about marketing and social media mm -hmm. that's worth twenty five dollars um, in my opinion I mean there's people out there that, that go to college and spend thirty forty thousand dollars to learn the same crap <laughs> really right um, you know I learned all of that for twenty five bucks 
months. Or if mm -hmm. I wanted to take a little bit of extra time, I can Google it, you know, and spend the next few weeks learning it for free. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I, you know, I want I want results a little bit. No, we want results now. We don't want to wait. <laughs> exactly, instant gratification society. Um, was it drive through? Drive through McDonald's society. I don't know. We need to come up with a different name for that. Regardless, uh, what was the question? It was internet marketing. Internet marketing, and network marketing, network and marketing. Move, network marketing moving into real estate is a you know the three top businesses for right now for somebody who wants to get into building wealth and starting their own business, but being able to oh, build a cash flow. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. What we're going to have to do, um, and Jeff is a master at this, is with the skills that he learned in the internet and the skills that he learned in network marketing, especially about people, mm -hmm. you're, we're going to have to do another section on his $10 real estate investment. Okay. That story is just going to absolutely blow your mind. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, the way he said the email, the text about the uh, about his uh, commission on it not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he bought a house for ten dollars and made eighteen grand. Yeah, I know. really? Right, right. Wow. He took he took that deal to to so many different um, um, title companies, and they look at him. They're like, "Is this a joke?" Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Several of them told him that's impossible. That 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 you can't do that. Right, right, right. And that, he goes, well, "We're gonna make it happen." That's the power so of that focus. The that's the power of that back. focus and knowing specialized knowledge, as he was talking about uh, talking about a little, uh, little while ago. Exactly. Exactly. But that never would have happened if he never would ha if he didn't learn some of the skills that he did in network marketing mm -hmm. and applied it towards real estate. Now, mm -hmm. what's interesting is he's applying those same principles into online marketing as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Because network marketing is the attraction business. It's the people attraction business. Mm -hmm. And the internet's full of who? People. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, it trains you on how to use words, how to market yourself, and then put it in an online platform. Learn mm -hmm. how to put it in an online platform because that's what's going to attract the people. Um, and, and, and bring more views or bring more of an audience, some traffic to whatever you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? That does. That does. That does. Now, uh, now before we're about to wrap this things up here, but is there, you know, I know you build and help build websites and things like that. You have your own business there. If you want to put a plug in there for your own business, website, you want to drive some more traffic to you, go ahead and use, do, use that time right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> put you on the spot. Got to be ready. <laughs> okay. Well, my company's JR Marketing. You can simply just visit joshrosemarketing.com. Okay. You got a Facebook page there too, don't you? I do have a Facebook page. It's all connected through my Facebook page. So if you just go to the website, you can find my Twitter, my YouTube, my Google, and my Facebook page uh, through okay. joshrosemarketing.com. Now, what's interesting, now I do want to talk about that and a little mm -hmm. bit more of my platform is, is my costs. For, for internet marketing, for website development, all that jazz is on average about 60% below average cost for that. Okay. Partly because with the changing of the internet, everything being open source, you can uh, tap into even more resources. Mm -hmm. it, it can bring some of that cost down, and you don't have to have a brick and mortar. I work from my house. Right. So, um, I have a team of individuals that I can tap into all over the country for certain projects and various other things that I need accomplished. Just yesterday, I had a guy call me. Um, he's got three very decent, large companies um, here in town, basically ready to start doing some business with us. So I didn't get the sale. But going back to surrounding yourself with influential people, mm -hmm. He's the one and his network that's going to bring it to the table. So Excellent. that's important, uh, the, the importance. So that's jrmarketing.com, correct? No, it's joshrosemarketing.com. There we go. Just want to make sure you get it out there one more time. <laughs> you know I know it. <laughs> All right, Josh, I'm going to give you a talk real quick. I do appreciate it. I'm going to close this thing out here. And here's what I want to say to your family. Now, you've heard about the importance of, of entrepreneurship. 
And here's the thing about entrepreneurship. If you have something that's going on in your life, I'm going to speak to some of the people out here now that may be looking for something right now and they're not sure if they're going to be able to do it. There's somebody out here who's listening to this right now and listening to the words that come out of my mouth and you're thinking to yourself, well, look, I've been looking for a job and I haven't been able to do it. I know how you feel. There's, there's one thing to not be able to find a job, but it's a whole other thing to be in a situation like I was where I can't even get a job. I was looking and could not get a job because of the things I've done in my, in my past. However, that doesn't mean I have to stop living. You know, once you get on a, once you get on the, on purpose, living on a purpose, you're living out the things that you're supposed to be having, that's supposed to be doing in your life, things start changing for you. That's the power of being focused. And when you start surrounding yourself with the people that are going to move you in the direction that you're supposed to be moving on, you're moving on purpose and you're getting thrusted forward towards your goals. Now, if you have that goal, we have a vehicle to help you get towards where you want to go. It's only going to cost you $25 investment to start off to get this going, but here's everything more to that. I'm going to tell you about this. If I, I was once told uh, when I was first starting out for network marketing that if your why doesn't make you cry, that it ain't big enough. And I thought that just meant a whole bunch of emotional things. But here's what happened to me today. I was listening to a YouTube video uh, um, about motivation. And I was just getting pumped up. I'd have my work, my break, my brunch, and I was getting ready for this for this hangout. And here's the thing: I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I had never done a hangout, but my mentor told me to do something, and I'm taking massive action. I have a vision for where I want to go, and he said, "Do this next," and that's what I'm doing. This was two days ago. I posted this about getting on a, a Google Hangout. Never done it before, but I was listening to this this YouTube video on motivation, and <clears throat> towards the end, there was. There is, uh, I'm starting to get choked up. Arnold Schwarzenegger started talking on there, and in the music that was just going on there, and all of a sudden, tears start just coming to my eyes. Because I was like, it was talking about you must have a purpose and just moving towards it. And I did, I just knew that I was moving on purpose and I wasn't going to give up. I was not going to do, be denied. I'm not going to be denied where I'm going, period. I'm focused, I'm hungry. People have lost their hunger. You can gain that. Anybody out there hungry understands what I'm saying right now. Don't worry about them. Get what you're going to get, and we can help you get there. But I started, tears start coming to my eyes as I was listening to this, and I didn't know why there was happening. I just got real. It wasn't an emotional thing. Just I just knew I was on purpose. And here's what happened. Right after washing dishes and so forth, I get back on Facebook to go ahead and do some more promoting for this hangout. And I get this message comes across. It says, get on this get on this hangout. They're going to teach you how to do a hangout. Now, I don't know about you, what you call God, universe, or whatever you want to call it, but that sent a message to me. said, look, I'm looking out for you. I'm on, you're on purpose. I'm going to help you all get to where you're going. That's what happens. The universe starts changing for you. And so I'm telling you right now, if you're looking for something, I'm telling you, the universe is telling you right now, you found it. What I want you to do is go ahead and click on that button that's on this page and start getting started with the $25 to go ahead and get you started working with this business, start building your dream. I'll be there every step of the way to help you build your dreams for those. So if you have found a purpose or looking for a purpose, we can help you get there. So I want to thank you guys for coming here tonight, Josh. I thank you for being here. That about wraps everything up. Anything else you want to say real quick before I end this here call? No, I'm good. All right. Well, let, let you guys know, this is D. Orlando Fortune. has been on my guy, Josh Rose. Tell you, keep it as simple as ABC, one, two, three, and do re me. And I'll tell you one last time, we're trying to help, we're going to help you get to a life of living with no doubt, just blessings. See you next time.